I'm uh, Brad Town. I'd like to call the Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, to my left, far left is Pete Kelly, Wayne Lamberton. To my right is Dana Hadley, and Diane Isabel is here as the town treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I do have a few things I would like to add to the agenda. Um, I would like to um, ask the board to confirm a few appointments that we had made last year that need, need confirmation. We discovered when we were doing the town report. Um, I need signatures on those appointment documents. Um, I've been presented a letter asking the board to draft a letter of support for an award for the town's master plan that I would like to ask you about. Um, I would like you to reaffirm the certificate of mileage for the state, um, adding our addition to a road that we made that I forgot about of 50 feet at the mall road. Um, and I would also like to ask the liquor board to meet. And that is it. Okay, uh, public comment. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, uh, treasurer's report. Okay. Um, I sent out personal property tax forms today in the mail, and they're due by April 20th. There's two people here that are you know, part of that. Uh, but they go out once a year. This is the time of year to send them, so they're sent out on time. Okay. And that's really all I've got besides the bills. Uh, David Huber, Planning Commission. Okay. You can go down here. Thanks. David, would you like to pull a chair up? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. or, or, okay. um, sure. David Huber is a fairly new resident, um, and he is interested in being appointed to the Planning Commission, and we are going to have a, an opening on the Planning Commission, and I have posted that. Um, so, um, David, maybe you'd like to just tell the board a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Dave Huber. It's my wife, Kate. Uh, Not a chaperone. Hmm? Not a chaperone. Not a chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we moved from East Montpelier uh, where we were renting. I uh, bought a house on West Hill um, mm -hmm. about six months ago. So we're pretty new to Berlin, um, but we're really excited to be here. It's a really nice area. Uh, we really like the house. Uh, lots of cool wildlife, lots of bears and you know fishers and all sorts of stuff. So we're we're pretty stoked uh, to be here, um, and we chose the area because it's uh, it's really pretty. It's close to where we both were, um, and it was uh, you know it just seems like a nice rural area. And, uh, we're both pretty drawn to that. Um, I work uh, as an uh, I'm an attorney. I'm with the Agency of Agriculture. I'm uh, in charge of the enforcement for the agency uh, for water quality, cannabis, hemp, uh, feed seed fertilizer, pesticides, um, food safety, consumer protection programs. Um, and Kate is a nurse over at the hospital. And you had an interest in planning. Have you um, done anything before with the planning commission type? Um, as far as planning goes, um, in addition to my work with enforcement, I'm also in charge of making sure that all variances um, are either approved or denied uh, for agricultural farm structures. Um, so I do have some experience uh, with zoning uh, when it comes to uh, large farm operations, farms that have over 699 um, head of uh, cows. And because um, uh, we maintain the zoning for that as opposed to a town. Um, but I also pitch in with uh, any advice that other towns have with regards to zoning for small farms, medium farms, um, backyard husbandry. Um, I first gained interest in the Berlin planning when I put a shed up on our property. Um, and had, a, just in my nature, I read the zoning laws that you guys have. And, and Tom didn't scare you away. So no, Tom good. didn't scare yeah, me away and good. persuaded me to, uh, <laughs> to, to look into getting yeah. another permit for putting a garage up. So uh, I now know the, the rules behind that. Um, You're familiar. The Planning Commission just had 
I think it was a three-year project to update our zoning, mm -hmm. and they really worked very hard on it, did a good job. It's going to be on the ballot um, for the town meeting, and they have some, uh, it's a very good committee, and if it wasn't, I wouldn't have said it on television, but um, it's a very good committee, and I think that it would be a nice fit for you, um, especially with your background. Um, it, people on that board come from different backgrounds and it makes a nice mix. So, um, well, thanks for your interest in welcome to town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess what I'm asking is the board to um, consider appointing David on the planning commission. I'll make a motion to appoint David Huber to the planning commission. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're on. You're in, yeah. <laughs> you didn't get away fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very well much. Well done. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice you. Would you like to be appointed? No. <laughs> Don't go far, Kate. We'll think of something for you. Keep <laughs> chaperoning. You're doing a great job. Okay, moving on to the next item is uh, Janet Clark. Claire. 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 Yeah. And I have uh, my coworker Jessica Sanderson. And maybe we'll just. Uh, so we are here from the city of Montpelier, Montpelier Senior Activity Center, which is one of the three divisions of our city's community services department. Um, we're integrated with the recreation and parks and trees. Um, and we operate on Berry Street. Uh, any, anyone here been to the center before? Not yet. Mm -hmm. We have a little infographic. I'm sorry we didn't get this to you in advance, but there's a lot of good mm -hmm. information here that I thought you might find helpful. And we're here because, um, as you may have mm -hmm. noted, we are um, making another increase to our funding request from your town this at this year's town meeting. And we suspected that some of you, some of your residents and voters may have questions about why the request is going up and we wanted to try to illustrate it to you and answer any questions. And just because I have to have. say it, Jana, um, we have a pre-town meeting on March yes. um, 4th, I guess. Yes, and um, we will we and will I hope that you will be there. there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always there. Um, if I'm not able to be there, one of my representatives will be there and um, we're always happy to do that. Uh, but we wanted to give the select board in advance opportunity to ask questions, maybe help us anticipate any concerns that you may have heard. Or, or so you're, you've asked for an increase of what, $4,500 yes. somewhere in that in that yes. range? Yes. And, and the question is going to be, um, why do you feel that's necessary to ask? Yeah. So in the last couple of years, we took on um, management of the Meals on Wheels delivery to the residents of your town. And Jessica manages the FEAST program, which includes meals served at the center as well as the home deliveries. And I'm just going to ask her to speak a little bit to that. And if you look on the back of that infographic, there are actually also some testimonials from people who receive the meals and a little more information about it. And I have um, in my notes here, I'm sorry to get them to you in writing or print it out, but I have some bigger financials that give you a picture of the actual cost that we cover. We fundraise as uh, city employees of Montpelier, we fundraise to do this for the residents of your town. Yes. Um, I, am, I have the honor of being program manager for the Feast Senior Meals. And we, the, this can give you all of the quantitative data about um, what we serve and who we serve and how many we serve. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't really describe how we operate as a village with our, our towns around us mm -hmm. to provide um, real whole wellness to our elders who need help. Um, as we age, <coughs> people who get over into their 70s may be living alone and we want people to live alone in their homes. Um, as long as they can. And this is um, something that does that for them. We, there's a three components to delivering home meals. It's um, you 
give a new, we, and we are, we are funded, we get some reimbursement through the state because we follow very, very specific nutritional guidelines um, that make them medically therapeutic diets. We also use um, organic and fresh vegetables as much as we can, and our meals cost a little more because they're such high quality. But that's only really one third of what we do for the people. We are only delivering like a third of the calories they need during the day. But it's nutritious. The other things we do are we provide a little bit of socialization, which as we, because we take a lot of classes, there's a lot of professional development in what we do. So we're learning more and more and more that socialization is a huge part of keeping people vibrant and, and well into their elder years. And so we provide a little bit of socialization. And the third part is we do a well, wellness and health assessment. When our drivers go, they usually go once a week and they get to know the people. And they can tell if they see somebody, if that person is acting maybe a little sicker than they were last week, or if there's something wrong environmentally, like their heat's not on or something like that. And I will tell you, a person in Berlin today, and I have to follow up on it, didn't respond. He, um, he didn't come to his door. His door was locked. His car was home. And we couldn't deliver the meal because we couldn't, we couldn't get inside. The driver calls me and lets me know that. I call the Berlin police and I say, can you please do a wellness check for us on this person? I haven't heard back from them, but I will follow up on it again tomorrow. Because we have done that many, many times where we've actually save somebody who had fallen in their own home or was sick and had to be got, you know, had to go to the um, emergency room. So what we do is really, really vital and we're, it's not just the people we serve, but the people who serve them. We have many volunteers who come to the center to help from Berlin. So we're providing this just whole thing. They come and they prep food, they deliver meals, they socialize and um, it's, for people who are retired and looking for something to do, it's a wonderful service, and I'm just really proud of it. Yeah, and just to clarify something that Jessica said, um, someone might deliver once a week, but on the other four days, um, other people are delivering. So there's actually five right. high oh, yes. meals Monday delivered through Friday. in the day, in the week, and, mm -hmm. and in some cases, frozen meals for the weekend. And we're always providing frozen meals ahead, especially in the winter, so that on those icy days when the drivers can't get out, that person yeah. at home has a meal that's a backup meal. Exactly. Yeah. And um, we did that today. Yeah. Because we had closures last week because we were yeah. and we used the meals, the extras the meal. Yeah. And the socialization really for a lot of the folks who receive these meals is the only person they're gonna see and talk to all day. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you know, so maybe they live with someone but maybe they don't. So we, we it's do really it. essential. We really try to provide as much inclusiveness yeah. to everybody as we can. Yeah. Um, celebrating holidays. Valentine's Day, they're getting quilts that Blue Cross Blue Shield knitted for them and we're doing cookies and the Valentine's Day cards are being made by the schools. You know, these, it's um, just, we try to take as much, um, we try to make them feel like they've got people who care about them, because we do. Yeah. Yeah. So we're serving about 80 different people from your town. Not all of them are receiving Meals on Wheels, but many of them are. There's others that are coming to the center, age 15 up, taking classes. We have about 75 different classes a week. Half of those are in wellness-related movement classes, and they're very affordable, and we give financial aid to anyone who needs it, including from your town. So they might take yoga, 30 bucks for 12 weeks. You know, that you get two classes out in the public and the private market for that. Um, we also have about 40 hours a week of free drop-in activities. That includes games, trips, um, reading aloud groups, playing music together, all kinds of things. We send out all kinds of publications to help people understand what's going on uh, if they're on our mailing list, social media, imprint. Um, and over the course of the year, we're serving about 1,500 people. Our annual budget's about 600,000, and about 5% of who we're serving are Berlin residents. The cost is about 30,000. Cost of the feast at home portion that yeah. Jessica was describing is, is about 13,500. We're asking less than the cost of only the meals that we're delivering to your residents. Um, so that's that's that kind of gives you a little background about why the request has gone up. And in the past, a different organization 
was responsible for the Meals on Wheels. That was Just Basics, who still managed the food pantry. Um, their, their ask was smaller. Their, um, the way they were doing the meals was different. We're doing them now. Our cost is different. The demand for meals has gone up. The proportion of your uh, older residents is going up, so we anticipate that trend to continue. And we're happy to do it, but we need, uh, we would like to have more support from your town. <coughs> My only, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. My only question is, to, do you serve the whole town for meals only? We don't serve the whole town. We serve Western Berlin, and the, the galley in Barrie mm -hmm. um, also serves some of the residents of your town. Uh, but we serve residents um, of all parts of your town with all the other services. So, yeah. you know, the classes and the drop-ins. and Basically from Berlin Pond yeah. to Montpelier, and then north, you know, Berlin towards East Montpelier. To you know, out. Um, well, sorry, yeah. to go yeah. Yes. So, and about um, of the approximately twelve thousand home deliveries that we do each year, about a fifth of those, between between fifteen and twenty percent, um, are for Berlin. And for many instance. of the people that we yeah. serve are people who uh, I get calls from the hospital, yeah. from the council, um, Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice, the council on aging, who um, people have. We had to go into the hospital for an illness or an injury and when they get out we get a call I get a call we're sending so-and-so home can you start their meals and we say yes we can we can start them now the hospital when they provide the meals in the hospital they're getting reimbursed through the insurance companies but we we aren't allowed to do that so what we have to do is fundraise and many of the people many of the people that we serve do um, donate towards the meals. We're not allowed. We're not allowed to charge for them. So we ask that they can donate. That they do. So many do, and you know it's. <laughs> you have people who send you a check for three hundred dollars a month, and then you have somebody, a little old lady, who has lives on social security, and every month you get a check for ten dollars for her, yeah. and you know, and that's that's the population you're dealing with. So. There's some, there's some who aren't able to contribute. So and, um, the yes, donations so, yeah. are voluntary? The, it, yeah. Yes, absolutely. We, yeah. mm -hmm. we, um, we aren't allowed, because we follow the Council on Aging, the Older Americans Act, which um, dispenses meals, um, money to provide the meals, yeah. so has very strict. What um, age um, is someone eligible to use your program? 60 and older. Yeah, for the home Thank members. You. And <laughs> for, the, for the other programming at the center, um, most of the programming is 50 and up, and some is, yeah. some is younger. For feast meals, you must be 60. If anybody comes to one of the, we call it Feast Together, Tuesdays and Fridays, if anyone comes to that and they're not 60, they have to pay $7 for the meal. Okay. And we're still supplementing it. If they're over 60, if they fill out a nutritional survey, they're allowed to donate um, any amount that they want. And those have been going up, actually. People are being very generous, you know, so. You know, the people in Berlin, I think, are very generous oh. um, with, with yeah, when this yes. is on the ballot. And I know you asked for an increase last year. We did. Was it? That was the is, first is year. Is that the first year of your food preparation? That was um, the first year. Uh, we were, our site has been producing the meals since 2000. Um, FY13, our site has been producing them, but at that time we had a partnership with Just Basics and the caterer who actually uh, cooks the meal. It was kind of complex. We've simplified it a little bit. Still produce at our site, but we're actually footing the fundraising burden now. Um, so you have a kitchen in Montpelier. We have a commercial kitchen. Lunch. It's licensed yeah. as a restaurant. Yeah. It's um, very well managed. And, um, yes. and, and we welcome any of you if you'd like to come and see. Come see the kitchen. Um, come have a meal. Come have a meal. Tuesday and Friday. Come meet a driver who delivers to your town. Um, it's really, yeah. it's really a vibrant place. I have that a lot wonderful of drivers who live in Berlin, yeah. mm -hmm. and wonderful. And if you need a testimonial from them, <laughs> I they'd be happy to give it to you. Well, I think, as as you know, I would encourage you to come in March. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. We will be at pre-town um, meeting. We're also going to have meeting. some representatives outside the polls um, with our infographic in case voters have questions. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if anyone calls the town offices or speaks with any of you and have questions you don't feel you can answer, I would welcome you to refer them to us. Um, we're going to be having some 
letters on front porch forum from residents and um, you know letters to the editor in the paper to, to help get the word out and in the world um, in advance of the vote. And, and if any of you are retired mm -hmm. and would like to drive. We're looking for more drivers. Mm. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Really about an hour a week. Just about an hour a week. Because it's just an hour and one day, maybe an hour and a half. You can be a sub even. Yeah. You don't have to go every day. So, so how many houses does one drive, do you do in that hour, hour and a half? We, we have five routes because we don't want anybody spending too much time. Mm -hmm. We aren't, it's all volunteer. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody gets paid. They right. use their car, their gas. And um, I try to keep the deliveries under uh, 10 stops. Mm -hmm. But that can be, if they're going to a certain building, they can deliver three or four deliveries in like three prospect or something like that. And um, so the commitment is that they come and do their job in about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. and that's picking stuff up, sending it out, socializing a little bit. I have drivers who leave at 10.30 and don't get back until 1 because they've been, they deliver so all the meals and go back and visit with everybody. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's community. Right. Yeah, it's community. Yeah. And the people who do it love it. They really yeah. care so much about the people that they're serving. Yeah. Yes, and the testimonials are, are we Yeah, so I if you have a chance, you know, have, could, a, have a look at those testimonials. Yeah, that we could have a lot more in there. So. Do you have some extras you can leave I with us? I can leave all of these. Okay, yes. that would so be wonderful. Feel thank you. Feel free to put them in the town office. I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Right. Really you. Mean, have you don't be afraid to come and take your classes. Yes, yeah. You know? yeah, and we appreciate your voters' support in all, you know, many previous years, including all these years that we've been kind of gradually going up as our costs and demand have gone up. He, the gentleman that was here earlier said he lived on West Hill. What's West Hill? It's a road that's oh, off Chandler of Chandler Road, road. In, in West oh. Berlin. You know where Chandler Road is? I guess I don't. Yeah. The old you're coming school up the road. before you get into Riverton where the old school is. Oh, way over. Oh, okay. Straight up. Oh, okay. He was See, I grew up in South Barry, so West. West Hill to me <laughs> yeah. is, is um, Somewhere Bridge else. Street yeah. up oh, yeah. to towards right. the airport. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every town has a West Hill. All right, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Okay, town sand policy. Angelina asked me to put that on, and uh, since she's not here, I, I guess I'll just say about it. As you know, we did come to a resolution on the sand. Um, I think it's working very well, and once we get through ice storms every 10 minutes, maybe we can talk about sand policy over the summer months and, and come up with some definitive thing, because it's, um, I, I think that in a way the exercise, if I were to do it again, I think I'd do it another way, but um, the exercise is a good one it got people aware of the issue, so thank you for allowing us to do that. Okay, and uh, the 2018 equalization review? I had spoken to you about the equalization review before. Um, again, the, the um, CLA is 102.14, which is pretty good. The coefficient of dispersion, 49, <coughs> which is getting up there. Um, we are, the assessors are in the middle of a project on mobile homes. That's the one that was the worst out of whack. And at that time, I did not have the uh, report, which is why I brought it back on the agenda for tonight, which I've sent to you um, if you're interested in seeing what made up the figures. It's a mathematical um, exercise. Um, basically, we were about the same as last year as far as the, uh, we did come down a little bit on the uh, coefficient of dispersion, which was good. The common level of appraisal was 102.45 last year. It's 102.14 this year. So um, anything over one is good. So yeah, uh, I think it's we don't better. have to have a revaluation. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dana. Um, option agreement for the easement on the well site. Um, Back in September, I came to you and advised you that the Public Works Board has been working on an option agreement for two well sites, um, and they have chosen a property on the Dodge Farm for two sites. Um, the agreement was 
thirty thousand dollars for well site E and twenty thousand dollars for well site F, and um, it was discovered that Vermont Land Trust um, had an easement on the property, and that had to be worked out. So it just has been worked out. And so what I need the board to do now, this has been ratified by the Public Works Board. Wayne, I don't know if you want to add anything to it that I'm missing. We've um, gone through multiple changes to get the land trust to be on board with the agreement. And Rob, Allen, and I are the executive committee for the Public Works Board. And we've approved this along with Rob Albert. Yeah. So what we need, um, I need a vote from you to um, go forward with the option agreement, and I need the vote to authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the town. Your motion. I'll move to approve the option agreement and to authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the town. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. So, sign that line after the second line. So, will be authorized? The line can sign it? Yes. really hard on this. I mean, he was put a lot of hours into that. And the letter of understanding with Father Gil Sagali and Valley? Um, this is the normal management uh, understanding letter that they send every year as far as doing our audit. You remember you chose Father Gil Sagali and Valley to be our auditors for another year with an option of two more years. Um, I have reviewed this. It's the same letter that we have approved many times before. And so I'd be asking the board to approve the uh, signing this letter and authorizing the chairman to sign on behalf of the town. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> And I'll give you two, Brad, because we'll have one for the file. <clears throat> What's the date? Uh, today is February 7th. Already? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bid openings for the escalator, David? The, uh, we have received three bids for the excavator. Um, we have put a uh, request out for a used okay. excavator. Yes, we have met with a few vendors on this. A few of them in here. Um, so let me get myself organized here. Um, like to keep score.
Who wants to start? Well, I'll start. I got cat. That'll keep it in chronological order here. Okay, Caterpillar has a 37.5 excavator. Um, the bid price is 95000 It's a new machine, no hours. You say it was a 37.5? 307.5. Oh, 307.5. Okay. And let's see here. They are also offering a lease purchase payment program. Five year at $20,983. Six years at $17,902. And seven years at $15,707. Double those. <coughs> so that's $95,000. You get a municipal lease through any dealer. I mean, yeah. You didn't ask for that, but yeah, you can yeah. get it through any one of them. You want to go on that? Sure. So this uh, <coughs> quote is from Nortrax. It's for a John Deere hydraulic model 75G. It's a 2017, <clears throat> excuse me, with 658 hours on it. It has a 6 foot 11 inch dipper stick, a cab with heat and air, 24 um, inch triple browser shoes, grading blade, Craig hydraulic coupler, Craig 28 inch digger bucket, Craig hydraulic thumb. Powertrain and hydraulic warranty expires 529-2002. Additional warranty may be purchased. It says uh, V-Trans, uh, town of Washington and Berlin put 515 hours out of the 658 hours that are on it, and it is $89,500. Is this the same machine you rented, Tim? Yes. <clears throat> and what was the warranty? It said, I heard 2002. Uh, yep, 529. May 29th, June. 20, 2020. 2020, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> what was it, 89.5? Oh. Yes. And I have two beds from Regard Equipment for a case, <clears throat> um, a 2019 case CX 75C with a dozer blade. Uh, most of the same functions with a note that the uh, Beauregard will set up the town's hydraulic tilt bucket with special spin-on quick connects. That excavator, uh, after the municipal discount, is 97400 Did it have hours on it? That one's a new one. It was new. Brand new, and that machine has two sets of factory auxiliary hydraulics, so you can run your tilt bucket and your thumb at your same time without having to disconnect any hoses or just flip any valves or anything. It's got two complete sets of plumbing. <clears throat> the second quote is for a leftover 2017 with 50, 51 hours on it. That's an SK75SR Cabelco. Um, same options and the same offer to, to, to hook up our tilt bucket for a price of from the insurance on the other machine. Um, we could hit the equipment fund, although we hadn't planned for this purchase, so we'd be robbing Peter and Paypal, but 
we could do that, or we could discuss a financing. So it was total the insurance ticket for the six. There's nothing, nothing else. That's it. Okay. The only thing that we have is uh, the salvage company bought it out of West Rowland. And we still have our cleanup bucket. And I just dumped about two grand into that last summer. I had it all refaced and all pins all rebushed and went through the whole mechanism of it. Which will fit on both everything. Um, Caterpillar never came to see me, so he has no clue of what what we even, you know, any of this or what we wanted for options. I mean, I, de I definitely want it so that we can run, use our cleanup bucket and our thumb at the same time because there's a lot of times when you're cleaning ditches that you need to be able to grab onto something with the cleanup bucket on. Mm -hmm. And our old one, we couldn't do that. You have you had levers out on the boom that you had to switch to use the cleanup bucket or the thumb, so you couldn't use couldn't use them both at the same time. You have the auxiliaries to to, to do the cleanup bucket and the thumb both. But what we do is we have the solenoid valve in the cab that changes from one to the other. Yeah, because yeah. we rented we rented the machine that it's the same one, right? Yeah, and it had it. Is when you're running the digging bucket, which most people, a lot of people use, doesn't twist. Right. So you don't want, yeah. So, as far as how we're going to pay for an excavator. I think uh, we need to have that discussion. I mean, I personally feel like that's what the equipment fund's for. Yeah, I mean, I need you to tell me where. I mean, because as you know, I'm going to rate it. If it's, right. You know. Yeah. As far as the <laughs> <laughs> I like it enough to do anything, but yeah. As far as the, I mean, probably should, Tim should review the quotes to make sure. Yep. Um, well, I, I was going to ask is if we did a lease purchase for this year and use the money that we have from the insurance for the first year's payment and then then you haven't got to go into your equipment account this year, which you didn't expect to have to, and then next year go into the equipment account and either finance it the way you want to finance it because you can change it at any point with no penalties. Mm -hmm. The equipment, as, as you know, is an equipment and structures. Richardson Road money is in that right. account. And that's well, good. That's good. You know, you know. Well, even if we do a lease purchase agreement, according to Caterpillar, it would be somewhere around about 17000 or 18000 So that would leave about half of what the um, well, that was that was another thing I was going to suggest to you that if, if you did a um, a lease purchase, I don't know what these two guys are for the first year's payment. You can do it a lot of different ways. You can make an irregular first payment, or you can divide it up over. Well, I mean, five, how much six, how much years. does it have to be? It has, you have to at least have. Well, if you do, you have to have the first payment up front. So if you do it for five. Payments, it has to be one fifth of the payment. If you had to do it for six payments, you can do it one sixth of the payment up front. Or if you do it for seven years, one seventh of the payment has to be up front. Because then, then between. I think you're the same way, right? Between the money that we're getting for our trailer from the insurance company, because that was told, and what was. Is that part of the 36 or is that on top of the 36? Well, I would, I, would put the tra I would leave the trailer money out of it for now. You well, what I'm, what I'm saying oh. is, is you're going to get that money from the trailer. So if you got money left over after your first payment, the first year on the excavator, 
it would it, we could pay for the trailer because you don't have the money to buy that either. We got to have them both. The um, I mean I think I would suggest the board um, let us analyze this a little bit as far as for finding a way to pay it. Obviously, we can't. I mean, whether it's some sort of financing agreement. We've only got the equipment fund. We would be grading Richardson Road if we get into that. Um, we'd probably have to wait for the FY20 budget to finish Richardson Road. Also, um, we haven't budgeted for a payment um, in the FY20 budget. I guess where I was going with that is if we needed to use the equipment budget to buy the excavator so we have it for mud season. And then even if we went to the bank and got a fifty thousand dollar equipment note and used the thirty six that we get from the insurance company to pay for it for the first yeah. eighteen months of payment. And I guess when I talk to you about this, I'm talking the budget. Cash is a different right, cash is fine, but the budget is but I mean our budget would be satisfied by the insurance check. Right, it offsets. I mean and that's where I'm going. Yeah. May I make the suggestion that I tell most municipalities this because we all we all offer governmental leases, which is a, typically a dollar buyout yeah. lease, unlike an automobile lease that's just residual at the end. <clears throat> but I'm not really selling money, so I always suggest that a town goes to the local bank and more times than not they'll save three quarters to one percent. Right. Yeah. Uh, because it's a tip, because of financing a town is a yeah. Tax exempt fuel and sure. that kind of thing. So, uh, hey, if you could save a point, it's, it's we can get the machine quicker. I mean, we get the machine as quick. Yeah. Because we're, 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 um, we're going to have to either hire somebody or we'd have our own. Yeah, and I think what I'm saying, I'm just telling you of how it affects the budget. As right, you know, municipal accounting is, is quirky. Um, yeah. Can we write a check? Yes. But I mean, it's well, I guess probably the thing we'd be having Dana and Diane look it over and yeah. Tim make a final decision next year. Okay. A suggestion, we'll make the decision. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that way, when it goes bad. Depends how much salt you want. Don't even go there. That's a good go way to go there. Come on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I guess then the thing would be to do is to take and okay. run your numbers data. Okay, that would be that would be great. Um, and I will be in touch, but you know how it goes yeah. out. And Thank you, Chief. You're going to be on the agenda the 21st. Appreciate the opportunity. If you're yeah, interested in coming back. Thank back. you for coming in. Um, I, I got a bit in there, too. The, the money that oh. you spent on, <laughs> on rent wasn't for naught because 80% were depreciated 80-20. So 80% of the rent that you paid actually went with the purchase. That doesn't happen very often because typically the machine gets bought by somebody else. But. Okay. okay, well thank you yeah. gentlemen very much. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Good seeing you. Thank you. Okay, bid opening for our equipment trailer. Okay. Let's go to we received two bids for a equipment trailer. I'm a one stop job. You <laughs> <laughs> sell chokers too? <laughs> yeah, we just bought one of them. I know. We're not going to ruin that one, are we? <laughs> no, I'm going to use it. Oh, it's going to use it. I'm going to use it. I got a bid from Clark's Truck Center for a BWS manufacturing tag along trailer, an easy load 20 ton. 2019 new for a total price of $20,071. That includes title, tax, and temporary tag. What brand was that? BWS Manufacturing. BWS. 
B is in boy. B is in boy. B. Yeah. So I have a pump for guard equipment for a 219 Eager Beaver 20 XTT trailer, 20 ton with tag air brake trailer, uh, inch and three quarter rope decking, <clears throat> two feet of extra deck length, 21 total flat deck, eight feet six inches wide, five rotor ring per side, wood wheel pass, lockable toolbox and a drawbar, ABS system. Hutch H9700 axles, steel wheels, two speed jack, eight feet long by 36 foot wide hydraulic wood filled ramps. And we're at 25,300. Did their trailer have hydraulic ramp? Air. It's got air ramps. It's got air ramps. Easy load, I think. Air and air ramps. Not spring assist? No. Yeah. The 38 inch by 76 inch wood filled air operated ramp. Gotcha. You need to review these too. Yeah. I see something there that doesn't look right. So you need to review these, and I think we should revisit this at the same time. Yeah. Awesome. Now I thank you for your time. <laughs> well, here we go. Um, Tim, if you have any questions or any of you, you can always give me a call. Okay. Get my number. That's yeah. And uh, I'll wait for you from you on Thanks. results. Thank okay. You thank you very, thank much. very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. It's pretty soon. I'll make you copies of this tomorrow. Uh, yeah, to the piece here, right? Was that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very. Yeah. There's a whole really bunch of of big words. And well, no, but what I was, this one's got numbers on it. Like you need to add yeah. numbers. You need to add this price if you want the air ramps. Um, so you need to read these closely. So, because you were about five thousand dollars less. I explained to him when he called me and wanted to know what what I wanted, and I told him I wanted the air ramps. And he no said problem. It's Okay. If you read that, it looks like it's the not base trailer is twenty grand, and then there's ads for the different thing. And when you add it all together, then he might not be the low trailer. Yeah. So yeah, I want to understand. It's worth taking. Well, I told him exactly what I wanted, and I told him exactly what I right. wanted. And I mean, our, the trailer that we had, it took two of us to pick those ramps up, and and you had your hands full with two of it. And I said, we got to do something different because somebody's going to get hurt. Right. Especially when you don't get it up and it flops back down. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what are we getting from the insurance on the trailer? 15.9. And, and they bought it in 2010. Tate bought it in 2010 and they paid 12 for it. Really? I, I don't think your don't. appraiser knew. Don't be advertising that. <laughs> well, it's too late now. <laughs> but I think all I'm saying is I think when you add the options together, the way I see that, yeah. that that first trailer might be 24, mm -hmm. and then it becomes pennies between them, and you need to spend some time with that. Yeah. So. Yeah, he, what what brand was Bulldogs? Eager Beaver. Eager Beaver. That's what we had. Was <clears throat> Is that a lot of chippers? No. Me and it. <clears throat> Okay, well, now you got homework to do. Um, I mean, I, I sat down with them and told them both what I wanted for trailers. And so, if it's add-on, then, then it's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I was reading was all above the price, but there was a whole other page, but I don't think there's any numbers. No, that's all right. We just need to clarify. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, confirm appointments. We, um, I'd like you to confirm two appoint three appointments. Um, one for Clara Ayer, we, um, I believe we voted for last year. 
but when we went through the town report, we didn't have the proper record, so I'm not sure what happened, but I thought I just had to reconfirm her appointment to the Planning Commission, which expires this year, 2019. And the other is for Paul Irons as an alternate to the DB, DRB and also as an alternate to the Central Vermont Solid Waste District. Yes, we do. We can move that we accept all three as uh, submitted. Perfect. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And as more part of that, I have, and then I also found something else I didn't need you to redo, but I need you to sign a new slip because the men didn't have it. So that's the appointment slip. Plan? Yeah, the um, consultant who did the work for the master plan asked the board to for a letter of support because the Berlin town of Berlin's master plan is up for an award for the Vermont Planners Association. Um, mm -hmm. She says suggested a letter which I will read to you and see if it's if you want to support her for this. Um, I'm writing to express the Town of Berlin Select Board support for nomination of the 2018 Town of Berlin Plan as the Vermont Plan of the Year. <coughs> Berlin's recently approved plan pushes the envelope in its approach and design. It showcases our community in photographs and makes information readily understandable through maps and graphs. The plan is unlike any other we have had in Berlin and we think Unlike many town plans in Vermont, it provides community leaders with tangible policies and recommendations to guide our actions and decisions. Our vision for Berlin is evident, summarized on the cover, and referred to consistently throughout the document so that anyone even glancing through the plan would understand what we want for the future of our community. The implementation program clearly communicates the town's next step from moving towards that vision to residents, property owners, and businesses looking to invest in Berlin. The creation of the town plan was carried out with incredibly limited resources through the dedicated efforts of the Berlin Planning Commission and town staff. The comments made at our select board hearing on the plan and the work of the Planning Commission from community members were overwhelmingly positive. Thank you for considering the 2018 Berlin Town Plan for what we believe is the recognition it deserves. Very truly yours, Brad Town, Select Board Chair. Sounds like you wrote it yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> those are your words, weren't they, Brad? Yeah. yeah. So, I guess she is asking if you would support that and sign this letter. I see no reason why. Sure. I'll, I'll yeah. make that one. And I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Those opposed, motion carries. Good job, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. And then cert cert the certificate of mileage. Yes. Um, 
we did the certificate of mileage about a month ago, and I did forget the 0.1 mile that we accepted in the past year. So um, there are only three lines for select board members, so that really worked out. And I need you to accept the certificate of mileage with the correction. So I'll move to approve the certificate of mileage, including the 50 feet of road we took at the Berlin Mall. <laughs> and I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. You plowing that 50 feet? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's I'm cleaning up their mess over there. So it's going to make a huge difference in our highway feet. study. Then. Right. <laughs> Maybe a dollar. <laughs> oh, my word. I but it's I, right, anyway. I guess I put the fear of God in them the last time I talked to them. I haven't done it since. Um, approval of licenses, permits, Vouchers. I'll move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant 19G15, which checks 18841 to 18892 in the amount of $252,107.13, of which $103,357.50 is for the Mirror Lake Culvert. Also, payroll warrant 19 15 for payroll January 6th to January 19th for $42,717.80. And payroll number warrant number 19 16 for January 20th to February 2nd in the amount of 49,171.54, as well as the January 2019 reconciled bank statements, general fund, sewer, and water commission, water division statements. You lost me. I'm second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, approval of select board minutes from January 3rd, 2019, January 10th, 2019, and January 14th, 2019. So, it appears. It's going to be one or two there. We can't. That's one thing. Uh, I don't think you can do the third. And you could do the tenth. And I think you could do the fourteenth as well. So I remember the tenth. I'm not talking to the town today for some reason. Oh, you're not? No. Did you want to? Sure. Well, now that we're <laughs> almost done. Is your Wi-Fi not working? I, I don't know. You I think we're having off. trouble with our Wi-Fi. Yeah. I think it's us, not you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, sh we shut it off so that you wouldn't see. <laughs> a couple <laughs> minutes late and they shut your yeah. 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 You got done quicker than you thought. Yeah. <laughs> January, I'll m move to approve January 10th uh, select board meeting minutes as printed as well as the special meeting on January 14th. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And I'll bring back the third at the next meeting. <laughs> so hopefully uh, it won't be here because yeah, we'll be running off the week. Uh, Come in on a special meeting afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, town administrator's report, Dana? Yes. Um, I guess I just have a few things. We did, um, I did fill out this week the annual report for the municipal roads general permit. Um, and the report says that we haven't had our road erosion inventory yet. And that is going to be done by the Planning Commission. You and, and uh, Dan Ferry will be doing that. Um, and we're hoping to get a grant to pay for that, for them to do it. Um, again, that is for our hydrologically connected segments. Um, and you've done a lot of work on ditches anyway. Um, the town center designation, um, we have met with the state, as I have told you. They gave us several items that we need to consider it's not going to be a, a slam dunk 
Um, we will be having some expenses for that to be done, and I have sent Ken Simon, um, who is um, at the mall, who has taken over that um, task for them, with that explanation um, and asking for a donation. So I have not heard. I have not heard back with him yet. I, we are having, the state is doing a parcel data development project, a mapping project for digital data. Um, it's a three year program, we're on the third in Vermont and they had town split for three years and this is the last year. Um, they will be loading the data from our grant list. What they're trying to do is map the grant list to match the map. Um, I have put out an RFP for the hazard mitigation plan that needs to be updated now that we have that funding. I have given the police chief, the police department, the course to work on. Um, I have not had very good luck with that, so I'm hoping that he would be able to bring that on home. The stormwater project, which you okay to check for a payment of 90% of that, um, that is the design plan that is being paid for by a grant that we got. If you recall on those project, there were five that got this eligibility for a grant. And so they have come up with some, um, a plan which will be, they'll be presenting to you at your next meeting of what the plan is. Um, Traffic signals, we have okay the bench test and that should be replacing the brains of the traffic signals. And uh, the five year plan for highways. Um, I did talk with Martin the other day about that and um, I think we do have some information that is very helpful. We have the inventory done by the planning commission um, and we have the municipal road permit, which will take care of a lot of that. So that's what we've been doing in our spare time this week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, liquor board? Move to recess. Recess the select board meeting and convene the liquor board. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All in favor? Aye. This is obviously the time of year that liquor licenses need to be renewed. We have six at the moment. They are Walmart Stores, Pizza Hut, Price Chopper, Jolly Associates, Twin City Lanes, and Kinney Drugs. I have no reason to tell you not to approve any of those. I'll move to approve all of those applications. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reset. I have, I have one more Thank item you. for that. Thank you. Um, I also have an application for uh, a permit for outside consumption from uh, Twin City Lanes. And this is, they had one last year. Again, I have no reason to. This is a permanent outside consumption? Um, like, a, like a patio or something? It's like a patio next yeah. to um, the bowling alley. Only for the summer or something? They just do it in the summer, yeah. Move to approve the application. So Last week it really wasn't well attended. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Very good. Okay. And so these, these need it on the approved line as well. Move to convene the liquor board and we vote. Yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Move to uh, adjourn the liquor board and reconvene the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll put your name down here a couple times too. Okay. Probably nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, after I've written my name about four times, I can't even read it. Well, <laughs> 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 that was a check. That one. 
With the license from the... No, that was right. Check those data. I may have written in the wrong spot. If you did, I wrote right under it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what I wrote right under it. They look good? Okay. And stuff and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a little restaurant down there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, round table fee? Actually, I do. So, Tim, while you're here. Um, on Vine Street, and then what's the street the town took over just recently? Berlin Heights. Berlin Heights. Can we put a stop sign there? Where Berlin Heights, T Bones. I just have been floored. Usually they're utility vehicles, they're not residents. And I see them come in, and now I just start to slow down, and they don't even slow down. They just. Right, it's a 90 degree turn. Yeah. And it's happened to me about three times in the past six months. And now with the snow banks being high, I'm even more cautious. But it just. I mean, it seems like it should never need a stop sign there. It's literally a. No, I agree. But um, there was a couple of plumbing trucks that came out of there and didn't even slow down. I don't know how they made the FedEx is bad too. Yeah. I've seen FedEx coming out of there and they don't even stop. Yeah. So I drove down there, you know, and turned around and came back and looked at it, wondering why they think they don't have to stop. I haven't figured it out. But for some reason, they stop sign. Yeah. So you do have a few people that read the signs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just just been thinking that. I mean, it has. Is, is that an ordinance? Yes, but I put it up. I just leave one out by the. Can you pick it up? Or yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> I'll just go to Barry and get one. We, we went through this on Hershey Road, remember? Yeah. I put yeah. the stop sign, yeah. and they had to fit over it. I remember. Yeah. So, let's take them to the ordinance change. Okay. Let's look at that stop sign up. Is that stop sign at Berlin Heights? Yep. Yeah, just going Diane on to Diane Street. Yeah. 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 Put in Diane's yard. Is it Diane that's yeah. running the light? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it'll have to go on her lawn. Yeah. <laughs> right in front of the front door would be good. In the yeah. table? Yeah. Okay. Any executive session? No, not tonight. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.